God when he went forth before your people, marching with them and living among them. The earth trembled, heavens poured down rain. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My friends, the Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to our Lady Mount. We're glad you join us for our daily Mass. Yes, it was a beautiful, glorious spring day. Today looks a little more wintry out there, but we're happy that you're here with us this morning to gather around the Lord's table and ask our God for his blessings for this day. We begin by standing in God's presence, mindful of our struggles, our weaknesses, and yes, even our sins, asking the Lord's pardon. We might spend this day, this beautiful gift of the day, in his peace. And with humble and contrite hearts, we pray. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, God the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring each of us to a lasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who for the salvation of the world brought about the paschal sacrifice, be favorable to the supplications of your people, so that Christ, our High Priest, interceding on our behalf, may by his likeness to ourselves bring us reconciliation, and by his equality with you free us from our sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin. The high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man of blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as in the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they became infuriated and wanted to put them to death. The word of the Lord. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit, he saves. Many are the troubles of the just man, but out of them all, the Lord delivers them. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of earthly things. But the one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever does accept his testimony certifies that God is trustworthy. For the one whom God sent speaks the word of God. He does not ration his gift of the Spirit. The Father loves the Son and has given everything over to him. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. But whoever dis disobeys the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God remains upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Again, good morning. We're glad you're joining us this morning for our daily Mass. And in our readings today, we see again that emboldened Peter who wasn't afraid to stand up to even the Jewish leaders. He had a new fighting spirit. He had a strength that was far beyond his own. It was a godly strength. He had become a godly man by the power and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So much so that he recites that beautiful line in our first reading when he reminds them that we must obey God rather than men. And that sounds so easy to say, but let's put that in context for a moment. Here is Peter being led before the Sanhedrin, before the leaders of his people, rather outnumbered. And they're all sitting there in all their pomposity, looking down on Peter, like, we know who you are. You're from Galilee. You're a fisherman. For goodness sake, and you're, here you are in our presence. You have the audacity to stand in our presence and lecture us about God. They probably all began to laugh when they thought that, about that. But that didn't deter Peter. He stood up and said, we have to obey God rather than you. What a freeing statement. Now for some who are behind Peter and his synthesizer might have said, oh my goodness, Peter, now you crossed the line. Now, now you're really in trouble. Now you really got them mad at you. But really, the angrier the Sanhedrin got, the freer Peter was to proclaim the truth. And the reason he was so bold and so free to proclaim the truth is because he believed very simply in the beautiful line we hear today in the Gospel from St. John. And it sums it up beautifully for us. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Think about that for a second. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Nice thought, nice pious thinking. Rephrase a little bit. If I believe in the Son, I have eternal life. That's real personal. That changes how we look at life. How we decide what's important in life or not. What we stand up for. What we speak out about. Our ability to, to get beyond our own fears and limitations. And have that beautiful boldness of the Holy Spirit. You've heard me use that word all week now last week as well, that boldness that comes from living and walking in the truth that only comes from the Holy Spirit. The Spirit will lead us to all truth. Peter finally knew the truth. His days of betraying Jesus are behind him. He's at the front of the parade and he's leading it right to glory. Even if it means he has to take the same path that Jesus had to path to Golgotha, 
to the crucifixion, to embracing the cross. And of course, as we all know, we know how the story ends. He does. Only to go on to eternal glory. So today, let's let that be our, our motivating thought. If I believe in the Son, I will have eternal life. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Walk in His grace. Now we turn to our Heavenly Father as we place all the needs of our hearts into our God's care. We begin by praying for our Holy Father Francis and our Bishop James, that they will always have the boldness of Peter to proclaim the truth in and out of season, to have the courage to stand up, even against all odds. We pray. We pray in a special way for our loved ones, our families, our friends, our sons and daughters, our mothers and fathers, our brothers and sisters, our grandparents, our grandchildren, our aunts and uncles, our relatives, our friends, all our loved ones. And in a special way, we place them in God's care this day, asking Him to shower upon them the blessings they need for this day's journey, we pray. Let's continue to pray for all the victims of the coronavirus, those who are suffering, those who have lost their lives, all those who grieve the loss of a loved one to the virus, that God will comfort and console them. And of course, we continue to pray for all those who continue to give generously with courage and boldness to serve their fellow man in the health field, in all the different areas of our life, where people are serving so that we might have some normalcy and come back to it, a healthy world, we pray. Let's pray in a special way for all those who have asked for our prayers and all those we have promised to pray for. For all these and their intentions, we pray. Let's take a moment to Called upon that special intention that lies in the quiet of our heart. We pray. And today we pray for the repose of the soul of Robert Brandel and also Frank Helfrich on this, the first anniversary of Frank's passing. And so for Bob and Frank, we pray. Good and gracious God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, give us the grace to stay the boldness of Peter to proclaim the good news, knowing that you give us the ultimate gift, the gift of eternal life. We ask this through Christ, our risen Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread of coffee, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. We will become the body of Christ, our bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and to work of human hands. It will become the blood of Christ, our spiritual drink.
friends in my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love, through Christ our Lord. The supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
was true to me. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have helped us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Only we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your son, Robert Brandau, and your son, Frank Helfrich, on this, the first anniversary of Frank's passing. Grant that Bob and Frank, who were united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them in to the light, into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Our Lady and Mount, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Martyrs, Saints Francis and Claire, each of our patron saints and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer to each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Love God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Alleluia. Friends, take this moment to make a spiritual communion. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorify the Lord.